Welcome to our program today. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. If you have been enjoying our programs and maybe today you're watching us again or you're even tuning in for the first time, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button and ding, hit the bell and uh, that'll keep you in touch with what we're doing and some of the subjects that we're sharing on. But I want to talk about the demonstrated gospel, the gospel of signs, wonders and miracles, which is truly the gospel. So I want you to look with me, please, to the book of Romans. And I'm looking at Romans, the 15th chapter, and reading from verse 18. And Paul writing to the Romans says, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. He said, I'm causing the Gentiles the unbelievers, to be convinced by two things, the word and the action, the deed, the manifestation of power by word and deed. This gospel, the kingdom does not consist just in word, but in power, in the divine, supernatural, dunamis, divine, miraculous enabling of God. This is a supernatural gospel. It is a gospel of signs and wonders. And he talks here and he says, they became obedient by the word of God and by deed, by signs, wonders through. And he, he fulfills it and he says, and the deeds are through mighty signs. The word mighty again is the word dunamis. We say dunamis much of the time, dunamis, which speaks of divine ability, divine, God-given, miraculous ability. Signs, things that point to something. Simeon, things that are pointing away. Signs, miraculous signs point to a supernatural person. Uh, Manifesting signs and wonders, signs point to something. A sign says there's London. A sign says there's Melbourne. A sign says there's Chicago or whatever. And when there's a demonstration of the power and a great miracle, that sign says, hey, there's a living God who's raised from the dead. The Bible says with great power gave the apostles witness. They bore witness of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. It says here, through mighty signs and wonders, a wonder causes you to wonder, causes you to be in amazement by the dynamis, the mighty power of the Spirit of God. He says, they were convinced from, he goes on here and it says, from Illyricum through to Jerusalem, which is over 2,000 kilometres, towns and cities, hostile pagan cities, that were being converted and brought under the conviction of God, not just by word, but by signs, wonders, and the divine manifest power of the Holy Ghost. And things haven't changed. How do we move a world that is fast becoming a hostile, humanistic, anti-God world? How does the church have an impact in this this world that is becoming pagan at a very rapid rate, a a world that has become a God-hating world. How do we convince it? How do we impact the world right now? The devil's flat out all over the world. He's making his play, but God is not finished. God is not finished. The devil's making a play. That's when the people of God rise up. That's when the supernatural of the Holy Ghost comes on individuals. That's when individuals begin to press in and say, hey, I don't want to be just an ordinary Christian. I don't just want to be a a Christian with a, uh, just preaching John 3.16, but I want to be a warrior. I want to be someone filled with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, moving in the divine unction, moving with signs, wonders, and demonstration of the Spirit. Paul says, by these things, by signs, Wonders, the Word of God and signs and wonders and mighty miracles. He says, I have fully preached the gospel. Fully preached. Without the signs and wonders, without the demonstration of the power of God, my question is a simple one. Are we fully preaching the gospel? The gospel is a full gospel when the the Word of God is followed by the manifest power, signs, wonders, and demonstration 
of the Spirit of God. This is the challenge we have. This is the great challenge that we face. When Paul went into Corinth, the Bible says when he went into the the pagan city of Corinth, which was one of the most pagan cities in the world, in the, in the ancient world. It was so uh, ripe with immorality and idolatry that through the Athenian and, and, and the Greek states, they called when a person went out to become very immoral or to live in a very bad way, they said that person is going out to Corinthianize themselves. The big temples of Aphrodite and Apollo were filled with immorality, especially Aphrodite. She, she had that, her worshippers, her priestesses were prostitutes and prostitution was rife. It was a wealthy centre, but so corrupt. And Paul was going in there. And the Bible says that when he began to approach Corinth, to come into that, that city, that was a city of darkness, a city that had been rebuilt uh, by the Romans in about 44 BC, and was populated mainly by freed men who'd been slaves and now were making their way. And the place was full of graft and crime and everything else. But here was a city, Paul was coming in to preach. And the scripture says that when he came in there, this was probably the most corrupt city he'd been into. And he'd been stoned, he'd been beaten, he'd been beaten with rods, he'd been in prison. He'd had so many things happen to him. And now he's coming into this city, which is so corrupt. And he begins to take stock. And he said, when I was coming, it says in the beginning of Corinthians, which is just over the page, he says, when I came amongst you, he said, he said, I determined when I came amongst you that I would preach Christ and him crucified. He said, I determined that. He talks about, he says, and when I came among you, he said, when I came to preach amongst you, he said, I didn't come in with the persuasive words of the wisdom of men. We are not going to move this world with the persuasive words of the wisdom of men. We will not move the world by just good preaching. We're not going to move the world just by the enticing words of man's wisdom. We're going to impact the world by the power, the demonstration and the fullness of the Spirit of God. He said, when I came among you, brethren, I, I, he said, I didn't come with excellency of speech, he said, or with the wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For he said, I determined not to know anything save Jesus and him crucified. And he said, I was in weakness. He said, he'd been beaten, he'd been in jail. He'd been kicked out of, I think, Thessalonica. He'd been jailed in Philippi. And now he'd, in Athens, he'd been laughed at and mocked. And now he's coming into the most corrupt city in, in the ancient world. And as he came in, he said, I was in weakness. I was in fear, Phobos. He said, I was going through it. Physically, Paul was exhausted, I believe. And he was shaking. He was coming into that city in his own strength. Paul was far from ready to take it on. And the Bible says he was in much trembling. But he says, my speech and my preaching. He said, I was weak physically but he said, my speech and my preaching were not with the persuasive words, the enticing words of man's wisdom. I didn't try to entice them with worldly wisdom. I didn't try to meet them at their level of wisdom. But he said, I came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. The demonstration of the mighty Holy Ghost and power the dunamis, the mighty demonstrated power. You know, the only thing he says that your faith may not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. And where the world's at right now and the state of the world right now, I think God is sifting and challenging his church and saying the church that is gonna impact now into these whatever time we've got left before Jesus comes, the thing that is gonna be the strength now in the church is that the church rise up as a supernatural church, demonstrating the divine power of God, a fearless church, coming in in authority, Christians moving in power, evangelists moving in power, unlike anything we've seen. That is my desire to step out again onto the field of evangelism in a, a, a fresh, manifest anointing of the power of God. How hungry are you right now? How hungry are you for the supernatural? 
I'm going to do some teachings coming up soon and you can follow our, our uh, programs and I'm going to start touching on the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the, the supernatural gifts of God. I think they're going to help you. And I want to put a, a hunger in people's spirit to start to seek the face of God like never before because God is going to hand gifts to people. He's opening His armoury and saying to people, come in and be empowered. Come in and seek me and desire earnestly the things things of the Spirit, especially that you might prophesy and see the sick healed and move in the demonstration of the Spirit. This is our hour. The devil doesn't own this hour. God owns this hour. Things might look bleak. Things might look a little bit silly right now. Things might look controlled. But I want to tell you, God is on His throne and He's looking for people who right now would say, I am hungry for the demonstration of the power of God through my life. I am going to seek God until something breaks out in my life. Is that you? As I'm talking today, is that you? How hungry are you to break into the supernatural? How passionate are you to break into a dimension of God unlike anything you've tasted before? This is the hour. This is the time. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for every person watching this program that a great hunger would rise. I pray the power of the Holy Ghost would be felt right there in their room and that people are going to be impacted, changed and taken to another level in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. God bless you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And may you be supernaturally hungry for something great. And that was good timing because someone's phoning me right now. God bless you. Thanks for tuning. <laughs>